The Nylots. Nandi. What a view, huh? Yes, it's so peaceful out here in Dunga Hill Camp. Not many people today. Lucky for us. Now, you wanted to discuss the Nandi. What did you think of them next? Well, they are similar to us. But first, what is their origin and migration, Doctor? Yes, of course. They are part of the Highland Nilot group Kalinjin. The Kalinjin migrated from Mount Kamalinga, which is to the northwest part of Lake Turkana, near the border of Kenya and Uganda. They expanded southwards and settled where they are today, in the North Rift region. Yes, thank you. Good job, Doctor. Now, why I thought of them next is because they had a similar importance put on their grandmothers in their tribe, as I discussed with the Luo. As that the children would learn from their nyanyas? Exactly. The village was set up of families with relations and enclosed with a hedge fence and a boma as well. Remember what a boma is from the Abagusi? Of course, yes. How could I forget that? This was used to put livestock in at night to ensure they were not stolen. Yes, males were taught from their fathers and girls from their mothers. But, as I mentioned, all uncircumcised children would get lessons about the community and the values from their grandmothers at night. Hmm. So, what happened with the circumcised children? Ah, once circumcised, this was the turning point of aging. Once the event took place, the males were put in one of eight age set groups such as Chumo, Kaplelaj, Kimnige, and Nyang among others. Whoa, you seem to even know all eight. There were eight? Yes, and every age set lasted for 15 years. This was also the basis of roles in the community. Hmm, something like the older you got, the more wisdom and power. You got it. The youngest were junior warriors, attacking enemies and defending livestock and the community. As I mentioned, every 15 years, a ceremony called the Sagit Ab Ieto happened, which made each group move up to the next age set, such as senior warriors to elders. And the elders had a role in decision making. Of course, yes. Now, see the villages each had a specific area called Bororet, and the group of elders were called Kok. The elders were chosen based on wisdom and warrior status. They governed matters such as criminal judgment, plans for war, and even making projects such as path making and bridge building. What an efficient group. Who led them? The Kurd Hogan was the head. He was chosen based on his storytelling skills, wisdom, and wealth. So most likely a rich man. Okay. Any other special people? Like for religion or ceremonies? Of course. There were medicine men and priests, but the most important figure was the Ord Koyat. Mm-hmm. How important was Ord Koyat? More important than me? To the Nandi, yes. To me, of course not. He didn't give me fish. And knowledge, remember that. I know, Buana, Rice, Griffin. Now, the Ord Coyote had great authority and was a symbol of unity for the Nandi groups. What do you mean? He gave advice to the elders, blessed warriors, and was important to settling problems between the clans. Of course, he had a hand in religious matters such as telling the future, leading ceremonies, and even a little rain-making and medicine men jobs. So, he was a busy guy. What was their religion like? Their god was named Assis, and he lived beyond the sun. So, not in the sky? Beyond that. Well, according to the Nandi. The family head would offer prayer at a personal shrine at sunrise. Here, they would ask their ancestors for good blessings. The Nandi were sure to give thanks after harvest and a sacrifice during bad times. Like in a community or just personally? Both. The larger village parties were held for births, marriage, circumcisions, and funerals. They shaved their heads and even brewed beer. Oh, Tasca. Not quite, Dr. Griffin. 
There were great clothes made to wear, like the senior warriors wore leopard and Columbus monkey skin. The women had skirts, and the elders wore gazelle and ox skins. So they must have done some hunting. You got it. They hunted elephants, gazelles, and leopards. This was for the animals' meat and skin, and done by men. And the boys gathered fruits and roots, while the women did farming of millet and sorghum. Livestock was very important to the Nandi, as they raised cattle, sheep, and goats, which the junior warriors looked after. Hmm. Any other skills? Yes. The Nandi were some of the best iron workers, and other small trades such as pot and basket making. They made weapons for bows and arrows. They are also some of the best bow shooters. Wouldn't want to get in a fight with a Nandi. What am I say? Very true. Oh, your phone is ringing, Doctor Griffin. What did you forget this time? Oh, excuse me. If I remembered, I wouldn't be getting a call. <laughs>